What a beautiful day, what a beautiful sight, ladies and gentlemen. It's the day of celebration. It's a day to bring together all nations of people from the four directions. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring forward the grand entry. We are proud, we are brave, we are true, ladies and gentlemen. Ha ha ha! Ka -ha. -ya. We'd also like to call forward Pamela Thomas from Soto First Nation. Three-year degree from Leader Saskatchewan, Amy Culrich. Good job, Amy. And moving down into the ITEP program with our Bachelor of Education degree, we'll call for the following graduates as well from Atakaku First Nation, Janine Ahenikiu. Good one, good one, man. That was cool. <laughs>
17 on a beautiful afternoon in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, the homeland of the Treaty 6 territory. Uh, our moms bring forward our children here. And now, oh, the smokes, braids, and the works. Hey. That's the authentic indigenous look right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I hope I, uh, I please accept my apologies. Edward School of Business, Bachelor of Commerce, Betty Nippy Albright. Congratulations. Yes, indeed. Beautiful. Beautiful. Come on in. Welcome. Welcome. Okaha. Okaha. You and sat they have within their communities, within their people, or their family as well. Good one. Good one. Smile, young people, smile. Increase your face value. Uh. All of those individuals that are graduating from high school, you deserve a round of applause. Fancy, fancy 
step. And they're doing all this with Elvis Presley shoes. Smooth style, stand by. Nice skin, our oh, oh, dancers. Looking good, looking good. This is what it's all about right here. Ooh, Welcome everyone to the Spring 2021 USAS Indigenous Graduation Celebration. My name is Graham Joseph. I'm the team leader for First Nations, Métis and Inuit student success at the Aboriginal Student Centre. Following the traditions of our ancestors and teachings of our elders, it's always very important that we introduce ourselves in a traditional way. My traditional Guxan name is Ach Desimski. I belong to an ancient family called the House of Guxan, which is part of the Fireweed Clan or Guskast from Northwestern British Columbia. And I'm Candace Wasakase Lafferty, Senior Director, Indigenous Engagement here at the University of Saskatchewan. First, we would like to acknowledge that we are coming to you from the Saskatoon University of Saskatchewan campus, which is situated in the traditional territory of Treaty 6 and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. And we recognize that you could be watching from anywhere across this land today. And we encourage you to acknowledge the place that you are now standing. Today should be the day we gather to honor Indigenous graduates at our graduation powwow with a grand entry that we have done so since 2010. Over the years, the USAS powwow has been a source of cultural pride on campus, with the beat of the drum being heard back in the bowl as far as the 1980s. In the last 10 years, it has become a widely known and highly anticipated event for graduates, dancers, craftspeople, students of all ages, and our entire USAS community. This cultural celebration is one of the largest events that the university holds annually and attracts thousands of visitors from all over the province. The pandemic made it impossible for us to gather in the way we normally would. However, it remains important for us to show USAS Indigenous graduates how proud we are of your accomplishments. We hope that the program we put together today helps you, your family, your friends celebrate this important milestone that you have achieved. We also want to recognize all of the graduating Indigenous high school students in Saskatchewan. We are so proud of you and we wish you all the best. If your future plans include USASC, we are excited to meet you. And always remember, you belong here. In our celebration today, you will hear from two of our elders, Roland Duquette and Marjorie Bocage. You will then hear from some of our senior leaders who have brought greetings to you and messages of congratulations, followed by a special message from one of our year's honorary degree recipients, Maria Campbell. You will also hear from our alumni guests, Helen Samagnus and her family, to share a little bit about what it means to be an alumni of the University of Saskatchewan following by some cultural performances and messages from familiar faces from around the campus. We will now hear from our elders, Roland Duquette and Margie Bokaj. The government of Kiyoka and Hiawe, in the Nascomuyan, Kaki or Tepe Pitagui, Kaskita Maswe, and 
It's a big place, but yet you, you conquered yourself, first of all, and you conquered the place. You conquered the books and, the, and everything, everything else that comes together with the, the learning and knowing that you have that capacity to further yourselves and be those role models through your maybe immediate family, maybe friends, community members, and everyone else that you interact with the pride that you have, that you've accomplished this. And this I give you in blessing to the Creator, that He's the one that's going to guide you every day. Don't lose sight of that, because we are, we are part of that uh, spirituality that we talk about, to maintain a healthy communication with yourself, your Creator, and whoever you interact with. So I give you that blessing this day that you will, will remember where you came from. Tanse Tawal, you are the future. You are the ones we've been waiting for. I make my prayer offerings for you today holding this eagle feather to honor you and the choices you have made to get here and the courage it took to make that leap and to persevere. Survival is not an academic skill. It is already within you. We are a self-governing people who own themselves. This journey of learning is only beginning as you find your true purpose and gifts to help the people and make good relations. So I call on the ancestors of this land and the waters to bless you today to cleanse and heal and protect in these times. I say Chimigwitch to the grandmothers and the grandfathers of the East for the new beginning, for life returning, for growth. I say Chimigwitch to the grandfathers and grandmothers of the South for joy and community, for compassion and care. I say Chimigwitch to the grandmothers and grandfathers of the West for action and solidarity, for good thoughts and good deeds. I say Chimigwitch to the grandmothers and grandfathers of the North, and I honor Grandmother Moon and all our relations and the waters of life. Hi, hi. You did it. You did it. You are stars shining bright. You are everything you feel, do, embody, and dream is enough. You are enough. Your dreams and actions are sacred, and there is nothing that can diminish you and your sacred lineage. You may not remember but your ancestors know who you are and they are proud of you. 
today. You are a spark of creation. You are part of life itself. You and your path are terribly important to us. Without you, the change that we seek will not happen. Without you and your way of looking at the world, we are incomplete. You are a star. Shine bright. Shine bright and keep your home fires burning. You did it. Thank you. My heart is glad that you made it. And now you go forward to fulfill the next part of your life. Hi, hi. Kinanasko mitin ekusi. Thank you so much for your words and setting an intention for us today. Now for some messages from our senior leaders, University of Saskatchewan President and Vice Chancellor Peter Stoichev, the new Provost and Vice President Academic Dr. Arini, and the Vice Provost of Teaching, Learning and Student Experience Dr. Patty McDougall. Hello, I'm Peter Stoichev and it's my privilege to be the President of the University of Saskatchewan and to be speaking to you today from this historic Convocation Hall. Thank you for joining us on this day of celebration and commemoration as we pay tribute to the class of 2021, the remarkable Indigenous students who are graduating from the University of Saskatchewan this year. First, as we gather today, let us acknowledge that the University of Saskatchewan is located on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place, and we reaffirm our relationships with one another. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we aren't able to gather in person this year as we traditionally do to celebrate your achievements. But that does not in any way diminish your accomplishments. We're proud to honour you today and are looking forward to seeing all that you do in the future. On behalf of the University of Saskatchewan leadership team, faculty, staff and alumni, I want to congratulate you all on completing your degrees, diplomas and certificates. The University of Saskatchewan continues to welcome and graduate more First Nations, Métis and Inuit students every year, but we have never had a group of graduating students quite like the class of 2021. Completing your programs in the midst of the challenges of the pandemic required more dedication and determination than ever before, and I congratulate and commend you for your success. You should be as proud of your commitment to completing your courses as we are of you. Indigenous students are essential to the success of the University of Saskatchewan, making important contributions in every college and every school on campus in Saskatoon, and also vital to the success of the university's other campuses located across the province. In the fall of 2020, we celebrated the opening of our wonderful new Prince Albert campus, which combined with our new Northern strategy, reaffirmed our commitment to Indigenous and Northern education and strengthened our Learn Where You Live initiatives. And this year, for the very first time, we are also celebrating the first University of Saskatchewan graduates from the Nunavut Law Program, as we reach further north than ever before in support of Indigenous student success. Another notable example is our College of Nursing, a made in Saskatchewan success story, with more than 20% of all undergraduate nursing students self-identifying as Indigenous. That's the highest proportion of any university in Canada. With a remarkable retention rate of 90%, we are training more Indigenous nurses who are making a real difference in healthcare in communities around the province and across the country. You are all now members of the University of Saskatchewan family of more than 164,000 alumni worldwide. As you celebrate today, please take a moment to reflect on just how far you have come and how hard each of you has worked to be here today. This is also a time to thank those who have supported you and meant so much to you on your path to success. Your family and friends, elders, professors, staff members, and fellow students. The University of Saskatchewan is dedicated to being the best place we can possibly be with and for Indigenous students and their communities. We're determined to support student success and to foster meaningful relationships with Indigenous communities. 
and we are committed to the principles of indigenization, reconciliation, and decolonization, priorities embedded in all aspects of our University Plan 2025 to be the university the world needs. We're also passionate about exploring different ways of knowing and research for and in collaboration with Indigenous peoples in the communities that we serve. We know that the key to a successful and vibrant campus community is one that is uplifted and enriched by the contributions of Indigenous faculty, staff, alumni, and in particular the students who we are proud to honour today. This past year has been challenging for all of us, dealing with a pandemic that has fundamentally changed our lives. Our hope is that you can use what you have learned and experienced during your time at the University of Saskatchewan to support and enrich the people in the communities that have supported you along the way. As you reflect on your past and look to the future, we encourage you to embrace the opportunities and the challenges that lie ahead, to always be creative and critical thinkers, and to seek new solutions to age-old problems. On behalf of the University of Saskatchewan community, congratulations once again. We wish you all the best in your next steps, whether pursuing a career or furthering your education. Your degree from the University of Saskatchewan will support your success wherever your journey ahead takes you. Thank you. Hello everyone, bonjour à tous. In the languages of this land, Tansi, Haukoda, Edlanate, Haukola, Tansi, Haukona, Anin, and in the language of my ancestral place of Samoa in the Pacific, Tsarofa Lava, Fapatai Telelava Mole Avanoa. Thank you for joining us to be together on this day of celebration and commemoration. As Provost and Vice President Academic, it is my honour on behalf of all those who supported your success to respectfully pay tribute to the remarkable Indigenous students who are graduating from the University of Saskatchewan. It is a sign of your many strengths and those of your families that you are here. Your success with achieving your undergraduate degree marks the end of a significant period of commitment and courage, and also the beginning of a new stage of your journey forward. I am so excited to have had the chance to talk with you today and to connect with you. This is a day of joy and celebration, of happy endings and new beginnings, of families and friends, of achievements, hopes and possibilities. We are truly honoured to be with you today and looking forward to seeing all that you do in the future. I do hope this is one of the proudest moments of your lives. Today is of enormous significance. You have completed your programmes amid the challenges of a global pandemic, requiring more dedication and determination than ever before. And I encourage you to reflect on the powerfulness of all you have accomplished. Thank you so much for your support for one another and for your faculty as we have journeyed together. We are all now members of the University of Saskatchewan family. That's a family of more than 164,000 alumni worldwide. And you are also part of 350 million Indigenous peoples across the world more of whom, like you, are now graduates and researchers, leading knowledge sharing and just leading. We're strong, we're achievers, and we are exactly who the world needs. This is also a time to thank those who have supported you and meant so much to you on your path to success, your family and friends, elders, professors, staff members, and fellow students. I do hope that you can use what you have learned and practiced during your time at the University of Saskatchewan to make a difference in your communities that have supported you along the way or wherever your career takes you. I like to think about a story from a time when I was with my mother and perhaps it suggests something of the difference that we all can make together. I grew up in a family of five children, and unbeknownst to me, we had one time 
where we could have one weekend, just one of us with our mum. I went away into the hills with my mum and we stayed overnight in a cabin. And at the end of our time there, in the morning, we were tidying up. My mum went outside to check out there. I finished up inside. I said, Mum, she came back into the cabin. I said, Mum, look, I've tidied up. It was just as we found it when we arrived. And my mother, she said to me, well, sweetheart, you've done a good job. But remember, we should always leave a place better than we first found it. And together, we set about doing that. I think that's what you're doing. You're getting ready to make things better than we first found them. Graduates of 2021, because you are in yourselves great knowledge makers, destined to teach others, I truly wish each of you and your families the very best on your journey that is ahead of you. Make your world better, make our world better, and be all you are called to be. Thank you. Greetings to students who graduate this June and to your families and your communities. My name is Patty McDougall and I'm the Vice Provost of Teaching, Learning and Student Experience at the University of Saskatchewan. Today, we launch a new version of a USASC Indigenous Graduation Celebration. And although I'm sad not to see powwow this year, I'm honored to be part of this event. Let me begin by offering my thanks to Elder Roland Duquette and Elder Marjorie Bocage for the words and inspirations you've offered us today. I know, as many of us do, that you continue to be a strong cultural base for our students, and I thank you for that. I wear my ribbon skirt today, gifted to me, allowing me to wear it on a day of celebration and at a time when I can show my respect for the power of Indigenous women and girls. Today, the university community joins with your families and your home communities to lift each of you up and to celebrate this important moment in your journey. You have completed what you set out to do, and I hope that along the way, there have been moments of happy and moments of reflection about who you are and what's important to you. I already know that there have been moments of challenge because university is a challenging place no matter who you are and no matter what degree you're pursuing. This past year, your final year, posed even greater challenges because of a pandemic that flipped our lives around, sometimes in the most painful ways. And yet you stuck it out, you didn't give up, and you've succeeded. This is your moment and we honor your achievement. Some of you will be graduating with a first degree or certificate from USASC this June, and for others, you've already moved on to completing a graduate degree. Well done. Today, as we celebrate your graduation, I hope you might start thinking about what comes next and that on that list of what comes next is the possibility of returning down the road, maybe even sooner rather than later, to keep learning and to continue to be part of the University of Saskatchewan. You've made a mark here. You are part of the fabric and the history of USASC. I offer you my sincere congratulations and my best wishes for the journey ahead. Thank you, Presidents Deutscheff, Dr. Arini, and Dr. McDougall. I now have the great honor of introducing to you Maria Campbell, the recipient of one of this year's honorary degrees. Maria is an award-winning Métis author, playwright, filmmaker, and proud community worker. She has spent more than 40 years as a dedicated volunteer, activist, and advocate for Indigenous rights and the rights of women and children. This past April, she celebrated her 81st birthday and continues to inspire Indigenous people across our country and the world. There is so much that we can say about Maria, from her many accomplishments as a best-selling author to her long-standing relationship with the University of Saskatchewan that continues to this day within our College of Law as a cultural advisor. We're incredibly fortunate to have her share with us today. Hi, hi, Marcy Graham. Kenaskumten, when you kiss the kawama, kiss the amina you go kenaskumta go. If you eat that get to go, say man to go up and go yekuta. If they kiss it, that yekuma. Thank you and hello. It's a beautiful day, and I'm so blessed to be here with you. I honor all of you. I congratulate you and hold you up. 
You've all come through an incredibly challenging time, and we don't know if it's even over yet. But the most important thing is that you've come through it with dignity, strength, and commitment, and you've graduated. These are the things that will guide you and define you for the rest of your life. I want to tell you how empowering it is for me and for other elders, I am sure, to see you all here today and to know you'll be leading the way into a new and different world for all of us and for our future generations. Remember always to carry the teachings of our people close, to carry empathy, kindness, and generosity with you. Myself, your families, your people, communities are so proud of you and we love you. Thank you, Maria. Next, we welcome the Vice Provost of Indigenous Engagement, Dr. Jacqueline Ottman, for her message to the graduates, followed by a message from our alumni, Helen Smagnus. Greetings to all my relations. I am Jackie Ottman, and I'm a Anishinaabe woman from Fishing Lake First Nation here in Saskatchewan, and I'm Vice Provost of Indigenous Engagement at the University of Saskatchewan. I would like to convey my sincere congratulations to all USAS graduates, in particular the Indigenous graduates. I am so happy for you. You are graduating in extraordinary and somewhat challenging times, but events such as your convocation provides an opportunity to celebrate and to be excited about the future. I understand the commitments and the sacrifices that you and your families have made for this amazing feat to be realized. Accomplishments such as these have the potential to not only change your lives, but they can impact the lives of our families communities and society in positive and in good ways. Because of your persistence, grit, and hard work, you've reached a new threshold and opened the door to amazing opportunities. I encourage you to continue your journey with resiliency and tenacity. We need your brilliance, talents, gifts, and aspirations. Know that you are hope realized. Elders and leaders of generations past have hoped for us. They anticipated you seven generations into the future, and they hoped that we, that you, would lead healthy, strong, and fulfilled lives. We honor these ancestors and those children not yet born seven generations into the future by living in good ways, by exercising and sharing our strengths. I want to welcome you into the family of USASC alumni. You are part of a growing number of Indigenous peoples who have graduated with a degree from this institution. And finally, I encourage you to inspire as you've been inspired. The Indigenous community and society as a whole is better and strengthened because of you and your achievement today. And I look forward to your future accomplishments. I hope that you enjoy this momentous occasion with family and friends and in safe ways. Take care. Miigwech. Tanse, gakia nuwagu maganak. Helen Samaganis, nisigasun, pound maker, equa Mr. Wasis Utsunia, equa Saskatoon Niwigin. My name is Helen Samaganis. I'm from the pound maker Cree Nation, and I grew up on the Mr. Wasis First Nation. I come to you from the law office of Samaganus Worm Lombard in Saskatoon, Treaty 6 territory. I'm grateful for the invitation to speak to you today, to take pause and reflect on my life since graduating from the University of Saskatchewan. As a graduate, welcome. You are now a part of the University of Saskatchewan alumni family, and we are proud of your accomplishments and your discipline and your perseverance. This is an exciting time for you as you hit this milestone and think about your future, as you think about how you will use your education and how you will take that time to reflect on who you are and how you plan to serve your community. 
The most important aspect of who I am is where I come from and the people I come from. That has always been an important part of me. Growing up on the reserve in Mr. Wasis, I think about those people who raised me, who taught me from an early age the values and the kind of person they wanted me to be. They taught me through practice. They showed it by their own actions. These teachings have stayed with me and continue to shape my career as I prepare to enter the grandmother stage of my life. As an Indigenous woman and a practicing lawyer, I have created and occupy a space in a historically white and male profession. You soon will find yourself entering these spaces. So I challenge you to push those boundaries and hold tight to your values as you enter into the workforce and into new spaces. I hope you will do so with success, honesty, integrity, and respect, because no one can take that from you. Stay grounded, stay connected to our land, our culture, and our language. Thank you, Dr. Ottman, Helen, and the Warren family for sharing your messages with us today. Now we'll have the Year of the Métis tribute performed by Tani Kotek followed by the graduate honor song performed by Walking Buffalo Singers. Hi, my name is Tawny Kotick, and on behalf of the University of Saskatchewan and the Graduation Powwow Organizing Committee, I sing this song to honor my fellow USAS graduates and their communities during this challenging time. We hope that you'll join us to be honored at the next Graduation Powwow. Long ago was born a people a new nation rose up strong. Years of trials and tribulations placed us here where we belong. With the past as motivation, all our dreams can be fulfilled. If we're true to our traditions, what a future we will build. We are proud to be Métis, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people, with a true Canadian. Long ago was born a people, a new nation rose up strong. Years of trials and tribulations placed us here where we belong. With the past as motivation, all our dreams can be fulfilled. If we're true to our traditions, what a future we will build. We are proud to be Métis, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people with a true Canadian. We are proud to be Métis, watch our nation rise again. Never more forgotten people with a true Canadian. Hello, my name is Rachel Fiddler. I'm the Community Resource Coordinator for the Aboriginal Student Centre. I'm also a proud band member of the Waterhen Lake Cree Nation. On behalf of the University of Saskatchewan and the Graduation Powwow Organizing Committee, this song was sung to honour USASC Indigenous graduates and their communities during this challenging time.
Thank you, Tani, and to the Walking Buffalo Singers. Next, we have a special presentation song and dance brought to you in partnership with Wanaskewin Heritage Park. A well-known dancer on the powwow circuit and one of our very own alumni, T.J. Warren. Hello everybody, my name is T.J. Warren. I'm bringing the men's prairie chicken dance style here for you. The dance style is said to originate amongst the Blackfoot Confederacy. The story is told that a young man at one time, you know, he, um, he was providing for his family. It was kind of the tail end of winter. And it was the early springtime when he had, uh, wasn't having any luck. He was trying to find some big game to bring home to feed his family. And so he had spent many days out tracking, you know, coming up empty handed and returning home. Many times, you know, taking that walk of shame home. It just so happened on one of these occasions uh, that he was out that he had some, heard some disturbance off in the distance. And what he noticed was the, uh, a gathering of prairie chickens off kind of. Uh, beyond the, uh, an area, a clearing. And he noticed that near this lake, there was um, prairie chickens gathered. He said that uh, these prairie chickens were out and uh, he was observing them. They were creating all types of sounds and uh, there was movement. He didn't want to disturb these animals and so he kind of stealthily kind of made his way that direction, kind of not trying to disturb them and you know have them scatter. And so as he made his way to see these prairie chickens, he observed and watched from afar. He noticed that these male prairie chickens were at the center of this gathering. On the outside of that, you know, was a circle created by the female prairie chickens. They said these male prairie chickens, they were challenging one another. You know, they were dancing, they were kind of strutting around and um, showing off. Every once in a while they would go and they would dance towards the audience, the female audience, and they were trying to capture the attention. If there was another prairie chicken that was taking all the attention, they would go and challenge that other prairie chicken. And so this young man, you know, as he was observing, he was watching these prairie chickens, you know, he, he remembered why he was there. His stomach was growling, and so he killed one of those prairie chickens. They say that night, you know, he uh, ate that prairie chicken, his family ate that prairie chicken. Everybody went to bed with some sustenance, you know. Him, you know, he was tossing and turning. There was, uh, you know, he couldn't sleep. And when he did fall asleep, that prairie chicken come to visit him in his dream. They said in his dream, this prairie chicken, you know, had questions for him. You know, he asked that young man, he said, hey, why did you kill me? This young man, you know, he, he responded and he said, well, I had no other choice. He said, we were hungry. My family was hungry. We were kind of the last resort. So this prairie chicken, you know, he said, okay. He said, but you kind of owe me big time, he said. And this young man, he said, all right, well, what can I do to make this up to you? And so this prairie chicken, he said, well, you took me away from this place here. He said, I was in ceremony. He said, I was dancing for those ones that can't dance. He said, I was dancing for that one I was going to spend the rest of my life with. He said, you took me away from that. So this young man, he said, oh, so I'm sorry. He said, well, what can I do to make this up to you? And so the prairie chicken, he thought about it. He said, well, I want you to learn this dance, this dance that comes from my people. He said, I want you to carry on this dance. He said, this dance will bring your people good fortune. He said, not only that, this dance will honor me. Sometimes the little things that are forgotten out here. And so this prairie chicken showed him the dance of the prairie chickens. You know, the early mating courtship dance of the prairie chickens. And this is where this dance originates. This is what we mimic when we come out and we dance. We move our shoulders. We move our heads. We ruffle our feet. We dance to the rhythm that is created uh, to mimic the prairie chickens in that early courtship mating season, that booming season as they refer to it. So again, this is the men's prairie chicken dance, and this is my rendition. I have many mentors over the years, and I appreciate all that has been shared with me. And this dance is a dance that I carry on for the legacy of my relatives, and I carry the, the family names of the scalp locks to be able to continue this dance style and to be able to share it. So the men's prairie chicken. Ladies and gentlemen.
and say my name is Lauren Oaks. Um, I'm Plains Cree, Meskwaki, and Navajo, and I'm from the Niganit First Nation located in Treaty 4 territory. Um, I'm a teacher here in Saskatoon, and I've been dancing the woman's fancy shawl ever since I could walk. It's all I've known. It's all I've ever danced my whole entire life. It's what I love to do. Um, the history that I've always been taught was um, that woman's fancy is kind of the more, the more newer style in today's power world. And there's a lot of renditions about the woman's fancy. There's stories about that we're mimicking a butterfly. Um, I've heard all these different stories, but the one story that I've, I was always taught growing up from my mom, who's also been dancing um, all her life too, is that um, I guess it's about women kind of um, overcoming um, a lot of boundaries that were put in front of them a long time ago. So a long time ago, the women were always pushed to the side. They were kind of always um, meant to be in the background and nothing more. And it wasn't until a group of women wanted to challenge that. So a lady by the name of Gladys Jefferson from the Crow tribe in Montana, um, she challenged that. So she um, wanted to challenge the men in dancing, saying like, we can do what they can do. We can, we can probably do it better than them. So she um, came more to the forefront when, it, um, when they would have their powers a long time ago. And um, they would tell us stories of having rocks thrown at them and them being booed and them telling them to um, you know, know their place and that they don't belong in the front. So. Um, I, whenever I tell a woman's fancy history, that's kind of one of the main things I always like to talk about is that these women um, push through a lot of um, the rocks throwing at them and the name calling, and it's evolved to what it is today. And a long time ago, the um, the way the woman used to dress was um, wasn't how like how I'm dressed today. So um, their movements were a lot more ladylike and a lot more closer to the ground. Um, some of them would carry a shawl on their arms. Some of them would keep their hands on their hips. They wouldn't really move their arms. Um, in their outfits, they were um, buckskin tops like my mom used to wear um, in the 70s and 80s. And um, they would have kind of plain shawls and like little capes. And sometimes they'd have um, wraparounds. Every territory has their own different style of how the woman's fancy used to dress. And it's evolved to what it is today. Um, we have the, essentially we have the cape, we have the shawl, which is, um, it can be kind of heavy too, especially with like the beadwork. And we have our moccasins and leggings and our feathers and all of our accessories. and. Typically, when you're watching the woman's fancy, what you're looking for is um, women that you know move with grace, and they whatever movement, whatever footwork they do on one side, they do it on the other side to keep that balance with um, their movements and their their footwork. And of course, you're looking for endurance. Um, I feel like with women's fancy, it's kind of the more um, categories where you really got to keep um, yourself in top physical shape because there's a lot of songs. We move our arms, we move our legs, we move our heads, so we pretty much move um, our whole bodies with. Uh, uh, woman's fancy so that's my rendition of the history of woman's fancy hi hi Our next dance style is known as the woman's jingle dress dance style. And it is said to have originated during the time of the Spanish flu epidemic. And during this time period, uh, this foreign uh, disease had entered First Nations communities. Uh, not knowing what it was, many uh, elders and ceremonial leaders in the community had tried utilizing different types of medicines to try to warn off and fight this. and so. It was said that a young girl had got very sick and very ill in this community. And she had all the symptoms of the Spanish flu during that time period. And so during this time period, you know, we, we seen a, a decrease of our people as they were succumbed to the, to the uh, illness. And so this dance style, they say, originated during this time period. 
a grandfather, he had a vision that this dance, if utilized in the way that he had visioned it, it would come and bring uh, healing to the community, healing to this child that had felt very ill, who was his granddaughter. And so amongst the Anishinaabe and the Ojibwe people, this dance style is very prominent and it is said to originate from their people. The dress, the cones, it is identified as a medicine dress, as a healing dress. And so when women, they come out and they dance, you know, they keep their feet very close to the earth. They dance very gracefully. Our dancer today goes by the name of Mallory Oaks, and she comes from Nikanik First Nations, and she is also a member of the Meskwaki and the Dine Navajo people. She is going to share her rendition of the woman's jingle dress dance style as it was passed on to her. She comes from a legacy of champion and renowned dancers. And so in her community, her people, she is a great representative in being able to share this dance style. So in this time period, we see this as a very, very appropriate dance to be able to share with people all around the world. During this pandemic, we've seen people gather in the center of cities dancing and utilizing this dance to try to bring healing in what we are experiencing today, very reminiscent of that time period. And so it was only appropriate that we share this dance with you too and hope that it brings you great healing as you make and take your journeys back to your home fires. For wherever you're watching from, we hope you enjoy all the dancing and the singing that is provided here and that you take something away good from it. And so with that, the woman's jingle dress dance style. My name is uh, Elmer Tatusis. I come from Palmaker Cree Nation. I received my first drum when I was 12 years old at Christmas time from my older sister. And uh, when I received that drum, you know, a lot of teachings came with it. My dad always told me to pray in my own way, the best way that I know how. And uh, he always taught me that singing is like another form of prayer. We're always in that mindset, you know, respectful mindset when we're around the drum and we're sitting around the, the big drum. This this big drum here is usually utilized in powwow. Um, you can have a group of singers, up to 12 singers, sit around the drum. You know, this drum, it represents a, a, a time that we all share in our lives. Um, for the first nine months of our lives, we are soothed and comforted by the heartbeat of our mother. And what this drum, represents is is that heartbeat you know it carries that that heartbeat within us um, when we hear the drum you know we, we those feelings that as if we are with our mother come back to us uh, those feelings of security and love and and you know it's it's something to be to be humbled by and and honored to be a singer and everywhere we go you know we feel honored and blessed to be a part of that uplifting of the community. Thank you, Wanuskewin, for partnering with us so that we could bring a little bit of powwow to our celebration today. Next, we have partnered with Warren Isbister to bring a sampling of Métis music and dance. Warren <laughs> Uh, hello, uh, my name is Warren Eisbister Bear. I originate from Atakoop Cree Nation. And today we're going to be sharing some of our 
dance, uh, the Métis dance with you folks today. Uh, today I have with me my little sister, Nianis Sasakmus, and my nephew, Gray LaShawn Seisbister. Um, dancing, Métis dancing, jigging has always been a really integral part of our family, uh, of our community, where we come from. And it really helps us build community, um, celebrate our heritage, and and we just love love the camaraderie and the, the, the beautiful dance itself. Um, today we're going to be sharing two dances with you. Um, number one is the infamous the, the Red River Jig. And we are going to be utilizing the sound of uh, the amazing Phil and Dallas Boyer. Uh, they've been gracious enough to allow us to use their their music today and we're very very fortunate to uh, be allowed to use their music and We've danced to and with the, the Boyer's music and they've always created such a, an amazing sound and a great atmosphere of music and celebration. So we're really happy to be performing the um, Red River Jig um, today for you. And then the second dance we'll be doing um, the Orange Blossom Special also from Phil and Dallas Boyer.
Thank you, Warren and crew, for partnering with us today to bring us some traditional Métis culture as part of this celebration. This brings us to the end of our celebration, but before you go, I just want to say from my family to yours, congratulations, and I know you have a community behind you, and I wish you nothing but success in the future, and don't forget, we're here whenever you want to come back and say hello. Thank you very much, Candace. On behalf of the Aboriginal Student Centre and our entire on-campus Indigenous community, we would like to express our congratulations to all the graduates, their families, and communities for all the hard work that they've undertaken while completing their degrees here at the university. I'd also like to thank our colleagues who have helped organize this wonderful event. We have an annual graduation powwow committee that brings staff members and students together from across the university to organize these events. I'd also like to acknowledge media production for all of their hard work in putting this amazing event together. Thank you, everybody. You've worked so hard for this accomplishment. Especially over the past year. Uh, having to battle through the pandemic. But you persevered and you did it. We've had the privilege of seeing you grow during your time at the University of Saskatchewan. We have seen you learn and flourish. With this group of graduates leading the way, we know the future. It's going to be an exciting place to be. Together we want you to know how proud how pleased we are with you. We're just so very proud of each and every one of you for your sacrifice, for reaching for the stars, and for being the very best you can be. Congratulations and good luck on your future endeavors. Together, we want you to know how immensely proud we are of you. Congratulations, and I can't wait to see the contributions you make to our university, and especially to our First Nations communities. All the best to you with your future endeavors. Remember, one thing, character is most important. Felicitations. Congratulations. On your resiliency and great success. And best wishes as you continue down your path. Marcy. Akamemo. Keep up the good work and stay connected to your USAS roots.